hey guys so in the last lecture we have seen torsional vibration in a single rotor system then we have seen a two rotor system torsional vibration in two rotor system and then we have seen torsionally equivalent shaft so this we have seen torsionally equivalent shaft here this and we have also seen two rotor system and we have seen single rotor system and started this topic torsional vibration so today we are going to study uh, three rotor system torsional vibration in three rotor system so i will just draw three rotor system so suppose this is the first rotor this is the second rotor and this is the third rotor suppose this is rotor A rotor B this is rotor C and the distance between rotor A and rotor B is suppose L1 and distance between rotor B and rotor C is L2 and suppose the moment of inertia of rotor A is IA moment of inertia of rotor B is IB and moment of inertia of rotor C is IC now uh, what are the cases in which the vibration can occur so whenever there is a phase difference in that case only vibration will occur so if all three rotor are exactly moving without any phase angle then there will be no vibration so whenever there is a vibration means there is phase angle so when phase angle will occur when both the rotor might be somewhat in opposite direction so what are the cases uh, so i will just discuss all the cases so suppose the first case is that suppose all three rotor are moving in clockwise direction or anti clockwise direction so in this case there will be no vibration so Uh, there will be no vibration so there will be no torsional vibration then the second case is two rotor two rotor moving in clockwise and the other rotor one rotor moving in anti clockwise or vice versa means this moving uh, anti clock and this moving clock then uh, what will happen suppose i am assuming that a and b are moving in clockwise direction so and c is moving in anti clockwise direction so this graph may occur so this graph may occur so this is a so this is b and this is c so here we have got one node and similarly the reverse can also be possible that b and c is moving in same direction so in in that case the graph will be uh something like this okay so i'm just taking this case so two rotor moving in one direction and other rotor moving in opposite direction so this is called one node system now the third case that end rotors moving in same direction and the middle rotor moving in opposite direction means this moving clock and this moving anti clock or uh, this this moving in anti clock and this are moving clock see i am not saying that this rotors are moving in different directions but there is a phase difference at the time of phase difference means what will happen that uh, if one rotor has moved then the other rotor is lagging behind 
due to some phase so that phase difference will create the uh, vibration so in that case so we can say that if uh, this two rotor are moving in ahead direction this this rotor is lagging behind so what will be the diagram so so this will be the diagram so so, so this is a this is b and this is c so this i was by mistake i'll just draw it once again so here we have got two node system two node system so this two node system so this length from rotor a to the first node we will call it as la and this length from node second to the rotor c we will call it as lc and suppose i want to find this length so what will be this length so uh, let me take this in between so here we know that from rotor a to rotor b the length total length is l1 so this is total l1 so l1 minus la so i will get this length as l1 minus la similarly this total length is l2 so subtracting this with lc so we will get this as equal to l2 minus lc so this is the length from rotor b to the both the nodes so this is a two node system so we will we are going to discuss this two node system only today so how what will be the uh, length or what will be the frequency of this uh, two three rotor system having two node system so now as all the three rotors are placed on a single shaft so similarly omega and a will be equal to omega and b will be equal to omega and c so the natural frequency of all the three rotors will be same because they are on on the same shaft so first let's compare first and last uh, ro uh, rotor so what is the formula for uh, rotors for uh, natural frequency those that is g j by i l so as the diameter is same so j will not change and modulus of rigidity also will not change so what we will change moment of inertia and length so will be equal to under root g j by i c l c so that is uh, moment of inertia of rotor c and length lc so by comparing uh, this two equation we will get that ia la is equal to ic lc so this is the comparison uh, by comparing first and last equation now suppose i have to find the natural frequency of rotor b so the natural frequency formula as we know that it is g j by i l okay so here uh, we have also written this as k by i so this torsional stiffness divided by moment of inertia is similar to the k by m formula so here the stiffness uh, on the left and the on the right so there are uh, as we can see here the rotor b so rotor b is uh, having uh, on the left and on the right both the sides so we will just add this stiffness on the left and right so here k will be equal to kt will be equal to kt1 plus kt2 so that will be equal to now what is kt so if i compare this two equations so okay, gj by l will be the kt so it is g j by l so what was the uh, length on the left so that is l1 minus la so it was 
here as you know l1 minus l a on the left and only write l2 minus l c so that will be plus g j by l2 minus l c so this k formula we will use in this equation we will find omega n b so omega n b will be equal to under root g j by g j by i b so that is g j by i b into 1 upon l1 minus l a plus 1 upon l2 minus l c so this is the neutral frequency formula now as we know that omega and a omega and b and omega and c all three are equal so we will use this equation so here uh, with the help of this equation i will just uh, make a subject of l a so length of a l a will be equal to i c upon i a into l c and this ratio of moment of inertia i will just write it as i r i r into l c so this is the uh, some this is one equation which we have derived from comparing this two and now we'll compare omega and b with any of this so let's compare so under root g j by i b into 1 upon l1 minus l a plus 1 upon l2 minus l c is equal to under root g j by uh, which we want to compare so suppose i am comparing c so i c l c i c l c okay so here we will just cancel out the root terms the root terms will get cancelled out g j g j will get cancelled out so we are left with 1 upon i b into 1 upon l1 minus l a plus 1 upon l2 minus l c is equal to 1 upon i c into l c so this is uh, the form after removing the under root and gj so now the relation which we have derived that is l a is equal to i r into l c this we are going to use here so instead of l a length of a i will write i r into l c so 1 upon i b upon 1 upon l 1 minus i r into l c plus 1 upon l 2 minus l c is equal to 1 upon i c into l c so i will just bring this i b on this side so what will be the so i will just rub this and if i bring on the left hand side so i get i b into i c upon uh, i b upon i c into l c so this equation we have got now i will just take the lcm so this i will bring here and this i will bring here so i will just take lcm so i will get l2 minus l c plus l1 minus i r l c divided by uh, l2 sorry l1 minus i r l c into l2 minus l c so here i have got i b upon i c l c so here so here now this equation is getting more and more complicated so here l1 plus l2 so what is l1 plus l2 so this is l1 and this is l2 so this is, that is total length so i will just write capital sorry uh, small l l1 plus l2 
so l1 plus l2 is equal to l total length so it will be l minus lc minus ir lc divided by now to multiply this to brackets so let's multiply so it will be first multiplying this with this then this with this and then this with this and then this with this. so first is l1 l2 so l1 l2 then minus l1 lc then minus ir l2 lc then plus ir lc square there is ir lc square which is equal to ib upon ic lc so this is equal to ib upon ic lc now let's uh, bring the quadratic equation so let's multiply this with this and this with this so i'll get l l ic lc l ic lc minus i c l c square minus i r l c square into i c into i c now now it will be equal to this multiplied with this so we will get which is equal to l1 l2 minus l1 lc minus ir l2 lc plus ir lc square this whole multiplied by ib this whole multiplied by ib now here our goal is to find lc and as you can see that the lc terms are in square so this lc square then in ones that is lc and without lc so we have to convert this equations both this equation into ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 so then we can find the value of lc so to do that we will just take common terms of first lc square so first lc square lc square into bracket so what is lc square so here it is here we have got lc square and here also we have got lc square so what it is so that is minus ic minus uh let minus ir ic minus ir ic and if i uh, here and here in this term where is lc square here it is ir into ib so this is also will be because it is on the right hand side so it will be also minus ib and ir so there are so many minus so let me take minus sign as common so this will become plus so minus lc square on the left we have taken as common then the lc terms so what are the lc terms so lc terms are here this lc term that is l ic into l then lc terms here is minus so on the left it will come then it will become plus l1 and this this is minus so this also will become plus ir it is ir and l2 ir l2 into lc so this is the lc terms and the next is Uh, sorry here we forgot uh, to multiply this with ib this terms need to be multiplied with the ib term so here lc so here ib and here also ib so the next we are left with 
so the next we are left with without lc terms so without lc terms here lc lc here also lc 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 so this is only term so this is positive so let's bring on the uh, left hand side so we have got ib into l1 and l2 now this equation is uh, this equation we have got so this is suppose this is ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 so this minus n we have to multiply it inside so our a will be so a will be minus of ic plus ir ic plus ib ir and b will be equal to ic l plus ib l1 plus ir l2 ib and our c will be equal to ib l1 and l2 so after we get this a b and c so our uh, our answer that is lc we are we are here interested in finding lc will be equal to minus b plus or minus under root b square minus 4ac upon c upon 2a so this will be our answer for the length of the rotor c so this is this is the length of rotor c with the node first and after we have found c we can find la also so this is the three rotor system in which we have found the length and after finding the length we can get the natural frequency of all the rotors because in natural frequency of rotor abc we are only unknown as la lc so we can get the natural frequency so this is a three rotor system with two node system so i hope you understood this this little bit complicated theory but it is worth it so in the next lecture we will see uh, other torsionally geared system and other theories in the next lecture so i hope you understood this lecture and thank you very much